What's up, slow pitch players? I'm Dan Blewett. I'm a former pro baseball pitcher and a softball throwing expert. I've worked with tons of softball and baseball players over the years on their throwing mechanics. In today's video, I'm gonna give you seven ways you can improve your throwing for your slow pitch game. And this is gonna make a huge difference because if you wanna play more positions, if you wanna play on a more competitive team, if you just wanna have more fun and make more plays, then improving your throwing is one of those fundamental basic things that'll make a really big impact. So stick around, these seven tips will be a huge help. Okay, so number one, this tip is for infielders. So the fundamental way to field a ground ball that's hit to your center is what we call funneling. So when you square up to a ground ball and it rolls into your mitt, there's a common error that most players make, which is then they start to take it out of their glove and they start to move all at once. What you wanna do is called funneling. And funneling means when it hits your glove, you're absorbing it right up to essentially to your belly button. And from this place, now you can move your feet and you can make your throw to first base. It's a lot like being a quarterback. A quarterback in football keeps the ball at his chest until it's time to throw. And because he keeps it at his chest until it's time to throw, his mechanics are gonna be consistent from one throw to the next. When you field a ground ball here and sometimes you're already on the move, where your arms start is gonna be very, very inconsistent. So to practice this, I would say either get a concrete wall and a tennis ball, or you can bounce onto yourself, or just get a partner to roll you some at your feet or at your knees and just work on vacuuming them up to your center so it becomes second nature when you're in the game. My next tip is for slow pitch outfielders. So obviously you're gonna play lots of different positions. So if you do play outfield some of the time or you wanna play outfield more than you do, then getting your footwork right will make a huge difference in how well you throw. So the, the footwork that's used in Major League Baseball and all the higher level players, you know, college, D1, all that stuff is called the pro step. And the pro step is actually really simple. Once you field a ground ball or you catch it, if you're a right hand thrower like I am, your left foot's gonna step forward, your right foot is gonna step behind, and then you're gonna stride out and you're gonna make your throw from there. So the big thing with the, the pro step is that it gets your chest into a good throwing position right away. So as I'm running and I feel my scoop my ground ball, I'm gonna bring it to my center. And as I step behind in real time, it's gonna get my chest close to my target. So I'm perpendicular to so my targets, that way my chest is this way. And then as my glove and everything accelerates and brings my torso and my hips through, that's what's gonna power my arm and get my arm to whip back and then forward. So the pro step is critical for getting your feet and then thus the rest of your body into a good throwing position because your footwork is really like having four really good tires versus having one flat tire on your car. If you have a flat tire, it doesn't matter if you're a Ferrari or you've got a Corvette or whatever, it's not gonna run very well. So you've gotta get your footwork down first. So the pro step is a huge help in that direction. All right, my next tip here for slow pitch throwing is moving your feet fast. So a lot of players, they'll get a ground ball and then right from there, they have no momentum whatsoever and their feet are hardly moving and then they end up pushing the ball. When you get a ground ball or when you get a fly ball, once you brought to your center, move your feet quick. The more you get your feet moving towards your target, the more your body will throw as a unit, not just from your arm. And every mile per hour that your feet are moving your body, because if you're shuffling fast, you'll be going a couple miles per hour just in your lower half, that's gonna get added onto your throw. So if you throw 40 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, but your feet are going three miles per hour, your throw is gonna be 43, 53, 63. So it's free velocity if you just move your feet once you get your ground ball or you get your fly ball, get your momentum, use it, it's free velocity. All right, my next slow pitch throwing tip is pulling your shoulder blades back. So once you get a fly ball or you vacuum up and funnel your ground ball, once your hands are at your chest, the big problem that most players have is they take the ball out in front of them. Then their elbow is in front of their body and it leads the way and they push it, they throw it like a dart. So once you get it to your center and your feet are moving, once your hands separate, they're gonna crack down, kind of like you're cracking an egg on a skillet. And then you're gonna pull your shoulder blades behind you. You've got to practice this over and over at home. I've got some other drills that I'll link to in the description below. But when you're throwing, your shoulder blades pull back and then your glove arm goes first. And when your shoulder blades pull back, it hitches your arm up with your torso, which is obviously connected to your hips. And so then everything accelerates as a unit in the correct sequence. 
So all you really need to know is that when you don't pull your shoulder blades back, your arm sort of acts alone and doesn't get the benefit from your lower body and your hips. When your shoulder blades pull back, now it gets the benefit of all the rotation and acceleration from your lower half. So once you separate your hands, the shoulder blades need to pull back. All right, my next slow pitch throwing tip is improving your glove arm. So for a lot of players, their glove arm will just sort of fall right in front of their body, or it'll be kind of right in their center like this. It'll just dangle here, or it'll be here. If you're not actively running at your target and throwing on the run, which is a high level advanced throw anyway, if you're just fielding it and moving to your target and your glove is here, it sort of blocks you and it doesn't let you rotate as powerfully as you could. So what your glove arm should do is once you're ready to throw, it should sort of swim out and it should fall to this side of your body. Whether it's completely down like this, that's okay. Or if it sort of tucks in, that's fine too. The way I would, I would uh, characterize the glove arm action is that it's kind of like petting a baby elephant. You'd go ear to ear like this, and then when it gets to this side, it falls down or it tucks in. The glove arm action is really important because whatever happens with your glove side also happens to your arm side. So really hard throwers, whether it's baseball or softball, their glove arm helps them rotate towards their target. So fixing your glove arm action, which I also have videos for more, more complete videos on that are in the description below. All right, my sixth tip for improving your slow pitch throwing skills is to throw more regularly. Now I know you play slow pitch because you wanna just show up, have fun, drink a couple beers, whatever it is, and that's great, I completely understand that. But if you struggle with your throwing, it's not gonna get better from not throwing. So what I would say to do is this, if you really are serious on improving and you really wanna get a lot better, invest in a $60 net that you can get from Amazon, I'll link to some below that I think are good. Invest in a dozen softballs so you have them. So then you can go to a field by yourself, you can set up a, a net in your backyard, you can play catch, throw into the net once or twice a week just there. The other thing I would say to do is get to the field and just hound somebody to be your throwing partner. So I know a lot of times people don't even play catch before a game, but ask, ask around, find someone, hey, can I go play catch with you? I'm working on my throwing or I just need to loosen up my arm, whatever it is, you can lie, you can use the real reason, doesn't matter. But just find someone to be your throwing partner. So obviously people that show up to the game, they're there because they wanna play and they wanna be ready to play as well. So spend the extra effort, show up 10, 15 minutes earlier to your games and play catch. But if you can go from one day of throwing per week, which is in the game, to two or three days a week, that's gonna make a really meaningful difference, not only in working on your mechanics, but also getting your arm into shape. As a former pro pitcher who's had two elbow surgeries, I know that taking care of your body is extremely important. That includes a slow ramp up for the season, a good arm care regimen, exercises, good mechanics, all that stuff. So take it from me, get to two or three days a week of throwing, if not more, if you want to, it's gonna make a really big difference. And lastly, when you throw, whether it's between innings, if you throw between innings, I know a lot of teams don't, or if it's before your game, or if it's at home, just playing catch, throwing into a net, you wanna create a routine of drills that are gonna help improve your game, that are gonna help improve your mechanics. So there's drills on my channel. So obviously I'll link in the description below to some that I think are really, really good. But your routine can just be things that you do in a game. What you don't wanna do is when you do warm up, just throw like this, catch, step and throw. This is something that, you know, if your son or daughter were to take up baseball or softball, that's not how you'd want them to warm up. That's not teaching high level throwing skills, it's teaching lazy throwing skills. So if your throwing skills need to improve, every time you touch a ball is an opportunity to get better or to get worse at it. So the very least thing you could do, and this is obviously honestly really, really good, is just work on the footwork stuff that you would do in a game. You know, if you're an infielder, just sort of phantom ground ball and play catch. If you're an outfielder, you can work on your pro step, just act like you field one, boom, work on your pro step. That's great, that's really, really good, that's easy to do. There's also th dedicated throwing drills that will help you work on your glove arm action, on different parts of your throwing motion in general. Again, I'll link to some of those below. So hopefully this video is helpful. Obviously there's not a lot of resources for slow pitch players out there. Most of my channel is dedicated to fast pitch. I also have a baseball channel, but I want to do some dedicated videos for you who just want to have more fun, play more positions, and play at a little bit of a higher level in slow pitch. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the links in the description below for my online courses and other helpful videos.